Hello and welcome back to the Villa Villa podcast. It's transfer season. You guys know the drill. I'm here, as always, with my good friend Dan Wiseman. How are you doing, mate? I'm really good, mate. I've had such a good time recording the last couple of podcasts. They're both out now. Uh, we record this literally just a matter of hours, I think minutes maybe, after the uh, the Ali and Rocco one went live. That one was really good. You guys seem to love the Renato Sanchez and Jesse Lin- Well, more the Renato Sanchez part than the yeah. Jesse Lingard part <laughs> of the first one. Um, but I really enjoy uh, recording these. Um, this episode will be going out after Christmas. So I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas, Villa fans, um, and enjoyed it in, unfortunately, the ways in which we can. Um, but we saw some really nice pod- uh, comments on the last couple of podcasts, mate. People saying that, um, you know, that they're really enjoying them at the moment. And, you know, I think it, football is, is exactly that. It's a bit of a relief at the moment, isn't it? And we all need it. Yeah. And I was, that's exactly what we do this for. And I was really happy to see that people were tuning in and managing to have a little bit of an escape, which is exactly why we record these pods, mate. And these episodes, these transfer rumor mills get a better reception than any of our other podcasts. So I absolutely love sitting down and talking to you about all this transfer gossip, mate. It's what I live for. Absolutely. Summit as well. We, we've, we've spoke about it before. We don't, like, of course we want to talk about Villa, but we always talk about Villa. So it's the opportunity to speak about something else. Uh, of course, Dan and I watch uh, Stupid Amount of Football. So hopefully these things, these episodes, these transfer rumour mills that highlight players that you may look at and go, well, I've never seen him play. Dan and I have got you covered on that. Don't worry. We, we, we've got you. And we I mean, there's one who, I mean, both of these players... You, you know, one of whom you will have seen play. You've seen in the title already. We're talking about Josh King and Milot Rashitska today. Obviously, you all know Milot Rashitska for infamously not joining in the summer when we did these transfer rumours. Again, just to point it out at the top of the podcast, these, you know, we, we talk about players who are linked to Villa in some capacity. We have seen these links in the Birmingham now, the Josh King ones, especially have been picking up a bit of steam recently. So that's why we're talking to them. Villa Filler podcast is not ITK. We're not in the know, but we're here to put you guys in the know on the players that we're linked with. That's that's what we're doing here. And, you know, sometimes like the Renato Sanchez one, where there isn't a link, Dan and I sometimes just like to pick out a player that we think would fit the profile. Like we're not, we're not making these links. This isn't any kind of fake like BS journalism. We're not trying to angle it as uh, we're linked, you know, Villa are in for Renato. Uh, or, you know, I mean, the title may suggest that, but it's just how you get views on YouTube. Like, at no point in the video have we ever said that there's been an offer, whatever. But uh, you guys get that. But just to just to reiterate the point, that's what we're here for. And Dan, I mean, you're going to take it away, first of all, with Josh King. An interesting one, because again, like Rashid good. there were some kind of tentative links before deadline day. It really started to pick up, like he's going to sign, all this kind of stuff. Never ended up happening. Bournemouth having a mixed time in the Championship uh, I think it's fair to say, but look like they could come back at the first time of asking. Uh, Eddie Howe's assistant is in charge there. Josh King doesn't look set to be the player who will be, you know, firing them to promotion ultimately, as he has been linked with with Villa a numerous times, Dan, uh, with a move in January. Yeah, I mean, you're right in saying that overall, it's it's been a pretty good season for for Bournemouth and and for you know all three of the relegated sides last season. Uh, Bournemouth have only lost twice in the 20 games that they've played in the Championship this season. Uh, picked up 38 points. They sit second. Uh, Norwich looks set to not run away with it, but they're, they're certainly leading the pack out in first. Um, but Josh King was a rumour that obviously, I mean, both of these players, we spent a lot of our summer talking about, didn't we, Dan, in, in Rashidska and King. Yeah, um, this is a player who was reported that Villa will, will be considering, was the word used by friend of the pod, Greg Evans. Um, just a quick plug on our Luke there Nillis video. Greg, Greg was involved in that. Nearly um, at 1K as well. I had, yeah, you, you know, that, that's a bit of a slow burner. So if you guys haven't seen that, go and check it out. I had a, a nice time speaking to Greg about Nillis. He's the guy that's now linked us with King, saying Villa was set to reconsider uh, him in the window. Uh, and he's a player that, you know... I would say of the players that we've spoken about so far, I would say King is the most likely to leave his club in the January window. And I'll just give you guys a few reasons as to why I think that might happen. Um, So first and foremost, he's out of contract in the summer. 
And that is the biggest factor because this is so often the case whereby you see clubs wanting to cash in on these players because otherwise they're more than happy to run down those contracts and leave for free in the summer. And with a player of, I can't imagine Bournemouth have too many players in their squad with the value of King. So they're yeah. definitely, I imagine, you know, if you're looking at it from just a business standpoint, going to want to let him go in the summer. Um, Jason Tindall, as you said, who was Eddie Howe's assistant, who's now in, char- in charge of Bournemouth, um, said after the Swansea game, uh, you know, addressing these rumours that he might be leaving. He said he knows the quality that Josh has got and there are no two ways about that. So it was great to have him back available and I'll, I'll discuss how, why he's talked about him being available in a second. But he said it's been a long time coming due to different things, which, you know, that kind of ambiguous talk usually means there's something going on behind the scenes, doesn't it, Dan? Um, Absolutely, man. He hasn't played too much this season, just the six appearances in the championship. He's actually only been in the Bournemouth match day squad once in the last 10 games. And Villa fans, if that's setting enough red flags for you, then you're right. You know, he's had a few, you know, he's sort of been, he's not the biggest fan. Sorry, Bournemouth fans aren't the biggest fan of him at the moment because they sort of feel like he's been feigning injuries here or there and he's not totally committed to the cause. And, I can see why they'd say that. I think he's definitely been angling for a move since the summer. I think he would have been pretty aggrieved because, you know, I think there is a bit of an ego there, but ultimately I think he knows he's a Premier League player. And I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, I think he knows his ability. I mean, you just have to wind it back to the uh, 2016-17 season. He put up 16 goals, two assists for Bournemouth. Overhead kick against Manchester United as well. Great. What a season it was, mate. Absolutely. Um, you know, even as recently as 18, 19, 12 goals, three assists. Um, you know, he, he was overall in the Premier League, 48 goals in 161 Premier League games. Not a bad record at all, considering the side that he was playing for. Um, he, you know, you guys, I won't talk too much on Josh King because, you know, it goes who he is. But one thing and I'm going to throw it back to you on this one, Dan, um, is the versatility he offers. He can play on the left. He can play up front. He's six foot one, which is important to, to uh, address because I think you know with with Wes coming back, he's still. It seems to be he's a little way off with that knee injury. Villa do need some little more depth. Ollie Watkins has played every minute in the Premier League for Villa, and he can't keep that up all season. We're going to no. need to to give him some respite. Six foot one can play on the left, can play on the right. So can play up front. Seems. You know, with a cut price fee, with his contract being up in the summer, this looks of all the links that we've talked about, maybe the most logical Dan. Yeah, but I think Dan, there is there is actually another player who I'd, I'd hate to mention this uh, this player in, in a pod because this isn't a player that we spoke about. But there's a certain Tanzanian striker who I think could do the business, Dan. I, I'm not sure if you've heard of him. <laughs> his name his name is Ali Mbwara Samata. Um, he's ripping it up in Turkey. I think he'd be I think he'd be the one man. But uh, yeah. no, Josh. I mean. It's as you say. There's, there are there are things to to consider. I, I don't know always whether versatility is is such a, a good thing. Like I, I mean, it is. It's definitely not a bad thing. But I think Villa needs Villa need a goal scorer. Like Ollie Watkins is a goal scorer. And again, this is this is no slander on Ollie. But if if Ollie was to get injured. Um, you're going to want someone who can step in and it's going to be seamless. And I think King, to be fair, would fit that. He's he's a presence up front. He's very skillful on the ball. Uh, there are other things, as you say, that he kind of off the pitch where by he's not been in the squad. That's It's, it's not really a good look for him. It's not something we've, we've got a really good dressing room. Do you, does that affect it? Uh, if there's an ego there, you don't really want that kind of mixing in with the dressing room. I think if, it, you know, if he's, if he's doing this, if he thinks he's too good for Bournemouth, um, you know, which I, I would, I wouldn't say too good, but I think too good for the championship is, is certainly fair. He's definitely a, a Premier League striker, maybe, uh, you know, bottom 10, I would say. I don't think he really fits the bill for what Villa are looking for, Dan. We spoke about this in the Deli Ali transfer room the podcast. Villa need a marquee signing. Now, I don't necessarily think we go out and, and buy someone who is uh, an Ollie Watkins replacement, but Dan, a player who we spoke about in the summer, someone like Maxi Gomez, that sends a statement. Like, and again, we're not linked with Maxi Gomez. That's just a name. It first, one of the first names that came off my head in terms of a striker who would 
uh, you know, certainly, as I say, send a statement. Um, if if the if the fee was right, I wouldn't again. I wouldn't I wouldn't begrudge signing King if you can get him for around the ten million pound mark, which I think would be more than uh, a, a good deal. Then I, I'd more than welcome it, Dan, for sure. Um, I just as long as he knows his place in the squad, which again he he may not be too happy with, but I guess. I guess at the end of the day, it comes down to finances. It comes down to status, you know, Premier League club, fighting for Europe. If Villa are in Europe, then that's a lot more games he gets to potentially play in next season as well. So I think it could work out for all parties in fairness, Dan. Well, this is the thing, mate, and, and you raised a good point in in the last podcast, actually, is about the heart, and I, this may have been off air, actually, is we were watching, we were speaking about that John McGinn bingo video, which was great, yeah. wasn't it? You know, just, just a quick Amazing. thing to talk about pure unbridled serotonin it was a great video um and we spoke briefly about the harmony that exists in this villa squad and how when you introduce a player to the dressing room that's such an important factor that often gets overlooked is how he's going to fit into the dressing room you want to sign a right character and i think matty cash has fit in brilliantly ollie watkins has fit in brilliantly emmy martinez has fit in brilliantly ross barkley and jack Grealish look like they've been playing together for years how they integrate integrate to the dressing room is such an important factor in the deal. And you don't want to risk signing a substitute striker that's going to offset that balance. But what King will be relieved to see is that he's Villa, as you would imagine, given his contract situation, Villa aren't the only club interested in him. West Ham and Wolves have both said that they're prying around, you know, this the current situation that he's involved in. I think the one thing with King is that I, I like him as a player. I think that's but I, I I think he's intelligent. He's 28 now, and you know he's really going to want to get that. I think he's got a, a, a big move left in him to the Premier League. Yeah. I think he can be off service for a few more years, not much more than that. He's intelligent. I like the, his movement. He seems to be a real go-to man. I remember there was a, a period in uh, I mean I, I know I'm winding back a little bit. I think it was 2017. He scored eight goals in five games for Bournemouth, and he got a hat trick in one game against West Ham, and. A lot of time when Bournemouth needed a goal, he seemed to be there. And I really rate that trait in a player, that ability to Absolutely. come from the clutch moments. But you're so right in saying that you have to sign the right character. And Maxi Gomez is an interesting call from you, Dan, because I think it's so difficult to, to find value in January. Um, and I think those clubs with difficult financial situations like Valencia, like Lille when we were talking about Renato Sanchez, like Bournemouth now who are in the Championship... That's where you go to. But Villa, as you said, aren't often that active in January. We often go into these windows with, with really high hopes. Greg Evans, again, who's usually quite reliable on the Villa, has said that you know he can see at most one incoming if, if the injury situation stays the same. So it's not going to be the busiest of windows with Villa. And I think we very need to carefully chip, uh, pick and choose who we go for. And it's a very good point that you raised, mate. Maybe Josh King won't fit that bill, but if we did sign him, I think he'd offer some very interesting traits for Villa. Uh, the ability to play in the similar kind of positions for Ollie Watkins, it means we can try him in a few areas, give us that ability to drop, to drop in the midfield. But yeah, I think ultimately it would offer good value for, and I think a player who would get a few goals for Villa. But with Wesley, Wesley coming back, it's an interesting one, but you know he can play on the wing. And speaking of wingers, Dan, I'm going to throw it over to you to talk about a man who we must have spoken about a million times this year. Villa fans, you're either sick of hearing his name or you're so excited by hearing his name. It's a player that I think we both thought at one point was definitely going to sign for someone then. It is, of course. I'll throw it over to you, Milo Rishiska. Well, we were so certain he was signing, Dan. We had a video prepared for the announcement. And yes, it was put private it was. on the channel and we were ready to go because... I mean, a lot of people uh, who, you know, aren't in the kind of content creation, it's hard to to keep on top of these things. There's rumours every day. It's going to be even worse in January. This is going to be our first January where we're kind of hoping to, like, you know, fully put our all into, uh, you know, transfer rumour mills, uh, fully committing to that, fully committing to getting player uh, videos out, you know, as we did in the summer, which you guys, of course, loved. Um, but sometimes you have to try and get ahead of the game because, uh, and there's nothing worse than when Villa sign a player or any club signs a player, that nobody knows about and they've kept it so quiet and thankfully we managed to we managed to have stuff it prepared uh you know things leaks which may you know ruin the excitement but 
uh, in terms of getting content out for you guys, we want to be, you know, the first ones to brief you on, on a, on a sign in on a player who potentially join in. Um, so yeah, we had a, we had a video prepared for Rishitska. Uh, here we are. He's not here. The video has been deleted. Um, and we should, do you know what? We should have kept it and then just posted that when we signed him. <laughs> the video was in the summer. It'd be a notable, notable difference. In, yeah, between, definitely. Uh, you know, the, 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 the podcast at the moment and then that, but, um, Listen, Rashitska is uh, a player who, yeah, he was he, he wanted to move away from Werder Bremen. They stayed up in the Bundesliga last season by the skin of their teeth. Everybody knows relegation player final. I think he scored in that game as well, uh, which uh, is an interesting way of doing promotion relegation. Uh, I love it, mate. Yeah, I love it's, it. It's it's chaotic. I'm here for it. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching the relegation playoff this this season as well. I love it. But in terms in terms of if Miller, he's had a bit of a difficult time this season. He has been injured, which isn't great, as, as a lot of the players we spoke about, actually, Dan, very injury-prone. Uh, and he's only made five appearances this season for Werder Bremen, who currently sit 13th in the Bundesliga. Uh, he's got no goals or assists this season as well. Again, kind of coming back from this injury, trying to nurse him back, is not it's not uncommon for a player not to have put up a goal or assist just yet. So there's not too you can't read too much into that, guys. Uh, last season, of course, eight goals, five assists in the Bundesliga which is, uh, you know, you may look at that and think, oh, well, you know, that he's not even hit double double digits for, uh, you know, a relegation scrap team. He very much carried the weight of that team's shoulders on him last season. He was... Well, he, so it's much, like Grealish, isn't it? It's the same yeah, sort of... 100%. And there's, the, the comparisons with Grealish don't just end there. Uh, he is, again, if, if you watched the video in the summer, you would somewhat briefed in, uh, from me and Dan on what Rashitska is like, but he's someone who likes to dribble with the ball. He's a threat going forward. He likes to cut inside. He can play anywhere on the forward line. And uh, as I say, he kind of carries that weight of the team, uh, similarly to Grealish in the past. Um, he's also, he's, he's fouled a lot because he creates so many chances. He was so important to the Vard team uh, that he is, he's in fact one of the most fouled players in the Bundesliga, which is, is interesting because when you're creating a team, now, of course, everybody knows Jack Grealish, most of our playing in the Premier League. I think John McGinn was fourth last season, which is also very interesting. But if you can accumulate a side of players that are so dangerous, you know, people just have to bring you down. That you can't do that to everyone. So having more than one player on the pitch who is capable of creating something from nothing at the drop of a hat, uh, it is really big for, uh, for for a team like Villa. You know, as I say, this would be the marquee signing that I'm I'm looking at Villa to make to saying, listen, we are going for Europe. Signing Rashitska, reinforcing uh, the striking options and the options in the wing, absolutely big for Villa. But um, he this season he's played a bit in the centre, he's played a bit on the right. He can play on the left, hasn't featured there this season, which is which is interesting. Uh, and and one thing that I wanted to because these guys you got you guys know these videos are filled with with stats that me and Dan we we go mining for. We like to try and find uh, dig up the information. And I was trying to look at similarities between uh, the way Villa and Bremen play. Now, I haven't watched too much Bundesliga this season, uh, so please do forgive me, but the stats will hopefully back up what I'm trying to say. Now, Dan, would you be surprised if I told you that Villa, that out of uh, the amount of total passes attempted in Villa's squad, Jack Grealish isn't actually first? Yeah, I would be actually. Yeah, I would well, be he's because he, he yeah, yeah. He, he's he's the focal point. He's the main. He's the go-to guy in that. Yeah, exactly. But he's he sits fourth. Dan, um, Matty Cash, Tyron Mings, and uh, Matt Target all sit above him in terms of passes attempted, which is very important. Obviously, yeah, that's we great. play an ex- we play an expansive style of football. The fullbacks are so important. Cash and Target, of course, are going to get plenty of touches. They're going to be forward. They're going to be initiating at the back as well. Same with Ty. He's the, he's the initiator there. Esri is the kind of uh, sweep up guy, I think. And and obviously the goal scoring threat now, I think that's kind of established uh, the, the roles in, with them too. Uh, but looking at this, these similarities with Werder Bremen, uh, you, you wouldn't be very happy to know that he, he's only attempted 62 passes this season. Again, he's, he's played five games, guys, so we can cut him some sack. That leaves him 18th in the squad. Uh, and funnily enough, Raymond's top three uh, players who have attempted the most passes in their side are also defenders. You've got Marco Friedel, Theodor nice. Salasi, and Ludwig, Ud- I can't even pronounce his name, Ud- Augustus. <laughs> all defenders, nice. and they've all attempted plenty of passes. 732 for Friedel, 
636 for Selassie and 524 for Augustinson, uh, which is, is, is vital. And that shows that, you know, when you're looking at a facilitator like Jack Grealish, as, as we've said, Dan, the fact that he isn't even top player, he's insisted, you can see where the similarities can be drawn in that. The, 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 the quality of service that he's getting is undoubtedly going to be better if, got, if he joins Villa, which, of course, leads to more chances for him to, to, to score and assist goals. Uh, and as well, you guys you guys should know now, I'm the XG not out of the two of us here. Looking at the XG for this season, again, he's scored no goals, got no assists, but he's got a 0.3 XG per 90 and a 0.5 XA per 90 as well, which is good. It shows that he's still trying that's to brilliant. create chances. That's he's, brilliant. He's played five that that's brilliant. brilliant. That's, that's, I, I, I'm right in saying it's better than Jack Grealish this season. I don't have the stats to hand, but that's th- remarkable considering... Uh, the the lack of game time and of course the uh, distinct lack of goals and assists physically not expected goals and assists um, but you know it shows that they're gonna come at some point in the season and uh, it would be great if he could cash his xg in at Aston Villa Dan wouldn't it I won't talk too much about Rashitska Dan before we end it I want to know your opinions on the signing because he's a player that excites me so much and I love watching him play and I think he would add so much to Villa his versatility is, is key as well as I said it can be a bad thing but it just means that there's always going to be a spot for him in the side it, that's the way I'm looking at it this guy was holding off for a European uh, uh, competing team and he ultimately didn't get that uh, RB Leipzig were, were linked with him as well which uh, I mean he really should have gone because they got a Champions League semi-final and I think sit top of the Bundesliga right now Dan if I'm if I'm not wrong um, does, and I don't know whether this is incredibly childish and, and petty from me as well, like I said to you off the podcast, but he didn't want to come. He didn't come. How much of that is him? How much of that is his agent? You don't know. Villa are now doing bits. We look like we could get European football. A signing like this would almost inevitably help with the push for European football. It, it just seems too good to be true in that, in that aspect, Dan, does it not? Well, I think the thing is with, with Milo is that Villa fans really got excited by this, didn't they? They really got their hopes about Milo. And understandably, I mean, the, the comparisons with Jack Grealish, you know, not necessarily in terms of playing style, but um, go and look at that man's legs. And I know, I'm not going to say that after this podcast. <laughs> look at Milo Rashitska's quads. They are huge. Um, the guy looks like the Hulk from the waist down. Um, he looks like a Bond villain. He, he, he's just so exciting to, to watch. And I mean, you know, I, I hate like highlight reels of players and watching compilations, but Milo's is so exciting. And so Villa players, sorry, Villa fans really got excited by him and I don't blame them. He's a hugely exciting player. And, you know, Leipzig had a lot of outgoings this season, a lot. Yeah. Um, but with them signing Dominic Zobersly, um, that's another player centrally who, who kind of will, will want to play that mold. They've signed now permanently Justin Clivert, who seems to fill the gaps left by the team the of them. It did. It did, yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, it's it's one where they, obviously, Ademola Luckman returned back. They let go of Jean-Kevin Augustin. Timo Werner went, Hannes Wolf then. And so it looked like Milo Rosicka was going to fill that spot. He didn't. He's had his problems with, you know, he, he was a tendon injury in, in training. Um, that he went but what's interesting again mate is you know we we don't like to like talk about pure waffle Verda Sport and director Frank Bauman confirmed that um, there's a chance that he leaves Uh, he said in his words he can stay but he can also be sold which is perhaps the most objective comment ever made by a sporting director in the history of football. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, he's not wrong. I think that can be said of pretty much any player in world football. So it doesn't say too much necessarily, <laughs> but just quickly to weigh in with my opinion. Um, it's a player that oh, there's so much romance and I really want him because it would just they be so bestie. exciting. Well, that that was also something I was going to touch on, mate. And the camper did us all dirty. I still haven't forgiven him for that. I thought that was a real oh. drop in the bummer. I was like, oh my god, here we go. The camber, the, the ITK, we never saw coming. Um, it didn't happen. Uh, but now Milo is one that I think I and a lot of Villa fans would love to see. I don't think it's one for January necessarily. I think it's a move that has to be done in the summer. I think there was definitely some contact between the clubs. Again, not in ITK, but the, the rumours were so concrete. It's not often you see something like that and it's just comp- complete nonsense. Like usually when when rumours are, are so so heavy and so dense. You don't prepare videos 
of the signing being announced when it's not that solid. That's we're that's no fools, the thing. Mate. we're no fools, absolutely. Um, I would I would love to see it. Do I think it will happen? No, maybe not in January. Um, but it's one that I think Villa will revisit at some point, and I really hope they do. I hope so, mate. And I think that's a that's a good note to end this little transfer review podcast on. I hope you guys have all had uh, a very merry Christmas and We'd just like to thank you for all your support this year. It's been absolutely mental. Uh, that you know, there's, I think there's certainly been times down where we've questioned why we're doing what we're doing. But you guys uh, this year have been absolutely amazing. We've kind of gone from uh, from from nothing to to something, and and to see so many of you guys enjoying the content, it genuinely means a lot. I'm not sure when this is going out. It will be after uh, after the Crystal Palace game, probably, unless there's any news that that, that comes out. Uh, maybe a Christmas, but maybe it, we get announced that we sign in these players on Christmas Day. Maybe they don't want to do us like that. So maybe uh, we can we can have that. But, it, it, you know, it, we, again, just like to thank you all for, for, for your present. support. Uh, and if you enjoyed this podcast, hit a like, comment your thoughts below on these players. Would you like them to join Aston Villa? We really want to know. And subscribe for more Transfer Rumour Mill content coming from now all the way to the end of January. Up the Villa. <laughs>